Hi, I'm Adam Wright. And I'm Irma Lancaster, and we're excited to welcome you to the February edition of Parent University. On today's program, we'll talk early childhood learning and career opportunities at the district and our schools. We'll also have a presentation on CPR that could one day help you save a life. And don't forget our school shout outs and giveaway at the end of the program. All that and more on the February edition of Parent University. All right, our first guest is Suzette Rivera, Director of Recruitment for the School District of Lee County. We're going to be talking about some job opportunities here at the School District of Lee County. So if anybody out there is looking for a job, Suzette has some great information for you. Suzette, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me, Adam. Okay, so let's start with, I know there's some upcoming spring career fairs that are right around the corner. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Yes, so we have actually a few events coming up before leading up to the spring recruitment fair. We actually are opening a new elementary school in Lehigh Acres, Amanasid Elementary. We have a hiring event for them on Saturday, March 4th, right here in the district office. And the school's looking to staff everyone from teachers to paraprofessionals to custodians. So that day is coming up and registration's on our website. We also have an event coming up in mid-March for our new middle school. So we're still working out those details. That'll be a virtual event. We'll send more information out through School Messenger next week. Can I stop you right there? Absolutely. Details about the new middle school, where it will be? Yeah, so the new middle school is going to be over off Arthur Avenue in Lehigh Acres, and it was ex previously it was Lehigh Acres Middle School's former building, and now they've re renovated the building, and we're going to have um, new students and new staff going to that school for this upcoming school year. Great. All right. Sorry I cut you off. Continue. Yeah, so we have also our biggest event of the year is our spring recruitment fair that's coming up on Saturday, April 29th. So for that event, all of our principals and assistant principals will be here at the district office in the morning and they're gonna be interviewing and hiring for the upcoming school year. So we're looking for teachers, we're looking for school counselors and, par and everything else that we would need for in the instructional staff. Great, um, how about, what about positions here at the district that have a lot of openings right now? So we are constantly looking for our bus drivers. That is a, a group of individuals that we need for this upcoming school year. And even for the current school year, we, we need to fill some of those positions. We're also always looking for paraprofessionals. And so those are what we know as teacher assistants. They're working in the classroom. We have current openings right now. So if people are looking for jobs that are right now that they want to start in the next couple of weeks, those are some great ways to get into the district. So I know uh, for teacher positions, you have to have certain certifications to be able to teach. What about uh, paraprofessionals? If somebody hears that and might be interested in that position, a paraprofessional position, do they need to have any kind of licenses or certifications before they uh, apply for that job? So there's two tracks for a paraprofessional. You can either have 48 college credit hours. With 48 college credit hours, you're good to go to be a para. If you don't have 48 college credit hours and you have a high school diploma, you'll need to take and pass the para pro test. And information on the pair protests you can, uh, is found on um, the websites for Cape Coral Technical College or Fort Myers Technical College. What about trainings that are available through the district? Can you tell us a little bit about that? People who may need some, some training for any of these positions? So trainings for the positions are really mostly at the school level. Now, before the recruitment fair that we have coming up, we do have a series of application assistance workshops here at the district office. So if anyone needs help with the application process, they can use our sign-in sheet on, that's available on our main page. What they do during that process is they come in, they reserve a computer, and they receive some support on you know, how to apply onto the district site. Also, if you need some help tailoring your resume a little bit, we can help provide some support in that area as well. And as far as like to get ready for the recruitment fair, those are that's the opportunity that we have right now. Great. So you, you talked about the application process, and we've got some help and support for people who um, need some help with that. But real briefly, if somebody's interested in, in applying for any job that's even currently available right now, how, how do they apply for a job? So they would visit our careers page. So they go to leeschools.net, click on careers, and there is a button on the right-hand side that says apply now. They can click there, and it takes them right to our internal um, application process. And from there, they can navigate and look for jobs, whether it's by location or by type of job and submit an application right then and there. And the positions that are posted right now are for this current school year. We have not advertised positions yet for the upcoming school year. That's gonna come later on in the month. This is a large school district uh, and it just continues to grow. So, I mean, we're always hiring. We have thousands of employees. Um, let's talk about why 
should people want to work for the school district of Lee County? So one of the greatest things about working in the school district of Lee County is the impact you have on students. It's amazing the work that you get to do each and every day with the future generation. So that's pretty incredible. Another great opportunity in the school district is your career progression. There's, you know, you may come in at, in a certain level or a certain position, but there's always opportunities for you to grow. There's a lot of professional development that's offered so that you can better your skill set and apply for the next level once you're ready. And also just, you know, being able to be a part of the community. So the school district is a, is a large part of the Lee County community and being able to be tapped into into that large of a scale is a great place for people to to start their careers or even continue their careers. Good benefits packages too. Yes. I mean, we just uh, reduced the amount that's taken out per paycheck for uh, employees to add a dependent to their health insurance. Absolutely. For so our board contribution did increase to a little over nine thousand um, for for our employees. So that's been great and exciting for um, employees who have you know children that they'd like to add to their health care. All right. That's a lot of great information. Anything else you'd like to say? No, I just that our team is here to help. So we also offer drop-in with Lee. So our team members are um, have Zoom hours, Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 9 to 11. Information is also on the website, but really there's no appointment necessary. It's just for you to drop in and ask somebody on the recruitment team any questions they may have about whether it's positions online or the upcoming recruitment fair or how do I be a certified teacher. One of us is there navigating those conversations and, and helping you through the process. And how does somebody find that? So on the main district page on leeschools.net, if you look on the there's a calendar we have an events calendar you can navigate through there and find out you know when we have those available right now they're scheduled Monday Wednesday Friday 9 to 11 all the way through the end of June all right Suzette thank you so much for coming on Parent University thanks for having me all right we'll be right back with more Parent University right after this Hi, I'm Holly Matthews, principal of the school district of Lee County's newest school, Amonasar Elementary, inviting you to join our team. At Amonasar, you'll have the opportunity to be part of something special, helping build and shape the school culture from the ground up. You'll be involved, you'll be respected, and you'll be supported. You'll be part of the district's first elementary school with a Cambridge Primary Program, an incredible environment for student learning. Please join us for a recruitment fair on March the 4th in Fort Myers. You can register at leeschools.net. Welcome back, thank you for staying with us. Now attention parents that have children ages zero to four years old, we have a very special program we offer here at the School District of Lee County for early childhood learning. To tell us about that, we have Xavier McCarter. She is a family advocate for early childhood. Hello there, how are you? Hello, I'm great, thank you for having me. Well, we're very happy that you're here. We actually do a lot of uh, surveys with our families to ask about what they wanna hear. And we had a lot of families that say, well, what about the littles? So, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what early childhood is? Um, our program provides um, services for children um, in our community who are low income families, um, children with disabilities, at risk families, um, with the belief that children, regardless of their circumstances at birth, can reach the full, their full potential. Um, we focus on um, core areas of early learning, health, family well being, while engaging parents as partners every step of the way. So explain how that works. What is a, a typical day? What are some of the things that are provided at this uh, learning centers? The routine, um, which we really focus on routines because children feel safe when they are um, accustomed to routines. They arrive in the morning, they have uh, family style breakfast with their friends in their classrooms. They engage at centers where they have um, choices. They obviously you know, have some uh, learning with the teacher, they, um, we believe in a curriculum which is called conscious discipline. It's the um, basically self-regulating your emotions for children and for adults too. We teach it to our parents. Um, it's um, a Head Start regulation that we follow. And well, what are these? What are these types of? Um, why is this important? I mean, you have a lot of parents that take their kids to daycare, you know, at that age, and they're not even thinking about school until they get to five years old, and it's time for kindergarten or maybe pre-K. But they don't think about learning that early. Why is this important? Well, the early childhood education um, spectrum basically focuses on. Uh, development uh, milestones, language milestones, and uh, cognitive milestones. So when they're in that early setting, um, things can be 
observed mm -hmm. earlier versus if the child is at home outside of the educational setting and then we can put um, services in place for those children if needed. So do you see a difference when uh, from students that don't do uh, any uh, some sort of early childhood learning whether it's through us or another agency versus those that that do when they get to kindergarten? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we have high quality childcare and education. Our teachers are very qualified um, in their field to teach these children to get them ready for kindergarten. The end goal is to have them ready and successful for kindergarten. Um, we promote um, on time regular attendance because we do believe children who have the best attendance in early childhood are the best readers by third grade. So it is very important. That is, that does sound very important. So where um, are these services offered? They're not offered at all of our schools, correct? correct? Okay, how many locations do we have? We have 13 locations across the three zones. So in the south zone, we have Villas Elementary, Pinewoods Elementary, Bonita Springs Elementary, and the Early Childhood Center. In the west zone, we have Skyline Elementary, Tropic Isles Elementary, J. Colin Elementary, and um, that's okay. We'll, yes. we'll, we'll give them information on where to find the full list. Those are some examples. So how do they enroll? Do they have to go to that individual school? Is there a main location? Is there something online? How, how, do, how do parents get involved? Yes, you would start with a pre-application um, at eclc.leeschools.net. You would submit that pre-application. You would then be contacted by a family advocate for the next steps for the waitlist application. Okay, and yes, um, is there a cost? You mentioned this is offered to for, for all families, yes. uh, specifically low income. Uh, is there a cost? And if there is, are there waivers? How does this work? Our program is a free full day program, so there is no cost to our families. Um, and there are waivers for children who are um, in non-low income families with disabilities. Got it. So it is free full day. And all of mm -hmm. that information can be found on your website. Yes, ma'am. Is there anything else that I didn't ask you about that you'd like to share about early childhood? Um, yes, um, so our program runs from, our early Head Start program runs from ages zero, or basically birth to three years old, and then we have our Head Start uh, program, that's our three and four year olds, um, that are three or four by September 1st. And when can they enroll? I, I did forget to ask that because obviously throughout the school year we have different times for open enrollment depending on what grade. What, how does it work for early childhood? Um, early Childhood starts their open enrollment in January of every year, so we are accepting pre-applications at this time. Great, great. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Savia, for being here. I'm sure our families really appreciate the information. Thank you. And right after this, we will provide families with a CPR presentation right after this. Attention parents of elementary students in the school district of Lee County. There will be a new proximity-based student assignment plan for elementary schools starting next school year. Bus transportation will only be provided for students living in their school's proximity zone. This will only impact students who are incoming kindergartners, new to the district, or live outside their school's new zone. Grandfathering and sibling preference options are available. You must create a focus account to rank your school choices and you have until March 10th to do so, so act now. Learn more at leeschools.net. Welcome back to Parent University. I'm Jacqueline Beavis with the American Heart Association here in Southwest Florida. I am George Lehman. I'm a retired firefighter from the Chicagoland area, uh, 40 years as a paramedic and firefighter. And you want to tell us a little bit about what your, where your passion comes from? My passion comes from my 18-year-old daughter, Lauren Marie Lehman. A tremendous dancer was at drill team practice and went into sudden cardiac arrest at school. It was witnessed by the coach and a certified athletic trainer. However, they did not do adequate, if any, CPR. Uh, they were told to get the AED 40 feet away and use it, which did not happen. As a result, my daughter passed away. So my family, we decided to try to get a law passed in Illinois to honor our daughter. Uh, and we were successful in 2008. It requires mandatory CPR and AED training in all Illinois high schools before graduation. Well, thank you, George. Every time you tell the story, it gives me a little bit of chills. So I appreciate you sharing more about Lauren. And so that's one of the reasons that George is an American Heart Association volunteer. What is the American Heart Association? Down here in Florida, you might have heard about us. We have a heart walk, a heart ball, and a Go Red for Women luncheon. The Go Red for Women luncheon reminding a lot of women here in our community 
especially moms there at home, that the cardiac disease is still the number one killer of women in the United States, especially new moms. So having known that, uh, it's important to make sure that you are aware of your cardiac health. At school, some of the kids may hear about Kids Heart Challenge. Uh, you, uh, the Kids Heart Challenge, of course, focused on health in school, uh, nutritional eating and healthy health and well-being, uh, mental health as well, and then not smoking. So some of you may have the Kids Heart Challenge at school and you get the uh, keychains. So thank you so much for all of the support that that brings to the American Heart Association, really making a difference and helping fund research into uh, cardiac disease as well as uh, stroke in, in our community. Finally, uh, CPR, hands-only CPR. That's what George is here to help us talk about today. So George, a little bit about why it's important for people in our community to know hands-only CPR. It's, very, it's imperative to know hands-only CPR because like I said, being a paramedic is the number of years I have. Uh, one of the frustrating things, they often went on cardiac calls and we were unable to get there in time to save the person's life. The thing is we depend on people uh, that, that to learn CPR. So the thing is what they can do is if they know how to do CPR, they, they increase dramatically the chance of a person being saved. Because the thing is, uh, like for example, sudden cardiac arrest, uh, for every minute that goes by that a person's in cardiac arrest, if the heart is not reset within 10% uh, chance less of living, so usually about the 10 minute mark, uh, there's not a good outcome. So the thing is it's imperative that, that uh, students learn CPR, and the reason being also is because we have at least 350,000 out of hospital cardiac arrests on an annual basis. The mortality rate is above 90%, and seven out of 10 occur at home. So the thing is, you wanna be able to have that ability to give the chance to, to take care of the people you love. Yeah, the, in the Be The Beat Challenge this year, we're challenging at least one person in every house, so that includes your house, to be trained in hands-only CPR. So we're gonna walk through some of the details of that now and how you would go about it. And um, a lot of the schools have access to, uh, to these um, Annie dolls and this training as well. So George, you wanna show us how it works? First thing you do is if you see somebody that goes down, you wanna determine if they're unresponsive. First, you look at, at the situation and that is the person in a situation where it's dangerous, then maybe you don't wanna be a second victim. But if it's a safe area, what you wanna do is get down and you wanna come down to the person and what you wanna do is sh shake and shout, are you okay, okay, are you okay? If they are unresponsive, they don't, they don't blink, they don't talk, right away, you know, we've got a problem. First thing you wanna do is you wanna call 911 you want to also, if there's somebody available, if there's an AED, say, please go get the AED. Uh, do not try to diagnose what the problem is. The thing is just get the professionals, professionals here as quickly as possible. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna evaluate if the person's breathing or not. And the easiest way to do it is put your ear down by their mouth and look at their chest. Because you'll, if they're breathing, you'll hear them breathe and you'll also see the chest rise. If not, you know that they're non-breathing, then you need to do CPR. To do CPR, in the middle of the chest, two hands together as such, and what you wanna do is you wanna continuously pump. And the rate is, you wanna go down two inches at a rate of 100 to 120 times a minute. And you continually, to continually do that. And do not slow down. If you have somebody there to help you, after two minutes approximately, get somebody else to uh, you know, exchange, but do not stop CPR until the paramedics come. George, you know how tiring this can be, this process before you switch, so it's, it is really important if you have someone else to help you, um, but also to have 911, whether someone else is talking to 911 or you have them on speakerphone. Yes, absolutely. And what will end up happening if it's somebody you know, we have residual oxygen in the body. In some situations in that, uh, a lot of people are uncomfortable about doing mouth to mouth, but if it's somebody you feel comfortable, what you want to do is you want to do mouth to mouth if, if it's a period of time, because the thing, again, uh, sometimes it'll take the paramedics seven, eight, 10 minutes to get there. So if you were to do that, what you would do is uh, 30 repetitions of, of uh, compressions, head tilt, chin lift, and what you want to do is hold the nose, two breaths, 
And what you do is look to see the chest rise. If it doesn't, re realign the head, do it again. Do not spend any more than 10 seconds doing it and get right back and do CPR. What you'll do in those circumstances, you'll do 30 compressions and two breaths. And you continue until the professionals arrive on the scene. Now, it sounds, like, uh, it sounds like it might be hard to remember how fast to go. I do have some, some musical options. Staying Alive by the Bee Gees, Ain't No Mountain High Enough by Diana Ross, Flowers, Miley Cyrus, uh, Poker Face by Lady Gaga. So all of these uh, rhythms keep up with that 100 to 120 beats per minute. Now, George, if this were a young person uh, under the age of eight, what would be different? If it's a, a child which is considered up to eight, eight years of old, or that's considered puberty from eight, or a baby, you do want to do mouth to mouth. And the reason being, because most cases with th those with children and babies, it's normally they have healthy hearts. So the thing is, it's normally respiratory in nature. So the thing is, it's imperative that you also do mouth to mouth. Okay, and that, but that would be the same 30 compressions? 30 compressions with a child. You want to do uh, two, two inches with a, with a baby. You're holding the baby in that, and you want to pr press down. Just two fingers two instead fingers, of the whole Two hand. fingers. You're not going to use both hands. But the thing is, whether it's an adult or a child in that, I, I use the method with the two hands. And you continue that 100 to 120. 100 to 120, and do not stop until the professionals get on, on the scene. If you are able to do that, even though it's tiring and yet you're going to give the, the person a, a, a much greater opportunity to live. There's only one other thing I'm going to add. It is essential if it's uh, cardiac arrest, it's in the electrical system of the heart, is you want to get an AED. If there's an AED available, get it and uh, administer it immediately. And because perfect CPR, if you have somebody in sudden cardiac arrest, uh, is not going to save their life. It will help them, but the thing is you have to actually reset, uh, reset the heart. And with an AED, it's, it's the same as defibrillation. It'll reset the heart and give the, a person an opportunity to live. It's no different than like on Monday Night Foot, Football was Lamar Hamlin of the Buffalo Bills. Quick response from the medical team, CPR and AED, they saved his life. And AEDs actually are surprisingly easy to use. It walks you through exactly how it works. So if you're anywhere in a public place, whether you're at a grocery store, in a school gymnasium, anything like that, call for an AED. If a manager or someone is around, they will know exactly where it is and be able to help you and grab for it. So George, thank you so much. Uh, you, made, uh, you made thousands of lifesavers out there today, um, heart heroes, if you will, by, uh, by helping train. So all of this information is online on our website. Um, so you can go check that out. And uh, at heart.org slash Florida, you can also learn more about some of our events, maybe create your own uh, heart walk team and help get in on the fun. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jacqueline. Hey students, I'm Dr. Christopher Bernier, Superintendent of Schools. And I'm Lois Tomey from Wink News. You're invited to an exciting event in downtown Fort Myers. The Southwest Florida Reading Festival is Saturday, March 4th at the Fort Myers Regional Library. This is your chance to meet best-selling authors and get your books signed. There's also writing contests, crafts, and food trucks. And a free book for all students. Learn more on the free app or at readfest.org. We hope to see you there. We hope you enjoyed this month's program and we thank our guests who provided important information. Please remember to take our follow-up survey to get credit for this session and make sure to share with other families so they can participate. Now we want to give a special shout out to the schools with the highest participation, Lee Virtual School, Lee High Acres Middle, Mariner Middle, and Pine Woods Elementary. Great job. And now it's time for this month's giveaway. We have a... $25 gift card to Top Golf. Oh, that's exciting. I haven't been out there. All right, let's shake up that basket. And the winner is Amanda Gregg, Fort Myers High School. Congratulations. Congratulations, Amanda. Now we'll be in touch to advise you on how to get your prize. That's it for this month's program. We'll see you next time. <laughs>